The need to get more and more circuitry in a smaller space has led to the development of multi-layer boards. Multi-layer boards are similar to double-sided boards, but have one or more layers of additional circuitry sandwiched inside. Plated through-hole multi-layer boards are the most widely accepted medium for interconnections in use today. These assemblies can be constructed from a number of different materials using a variety of methods. You're going to see a great variety of boards in this work. Every one of these is a multi-layered one, but they've each come from different systems. These boards may be electrostatically sensitive, therefore we always wear a wrist grounding strap whenever we're working on a populated board. Now let's get started by addressing a common problem with multi-layer boards. The boards we will use are specifically designed for training purposes and practice. This one has four layers of circuitry sandwiched together. It's laminated epoxy glass with through board and interlayer connections made by a plated through hole process. Let's assume this board has an open conductor located three layers down and we've already removed the surface components. This illustration shows the inside of a multi-layer board. This circuitry is on the top surface of the board. This is the second layer. And this is the third layer with the open circuit in the conductor. To get to the problem, we dig down from the top to the second layer, temporarily remove a section of this conductor since it crosses our area, and then dig down to the third layer. There we replace the damaged area with a new piece of copper conductor and then rebuild the board layer by layer back up to the top. Multilayer repairs require proper lighting and magnification, therefore a microscope with an illuminator is an essential device. The microscope selected should have adjustable settings for both 10 and 20 power. We will be using very sharp tools, not only scalpels, but excavation tools like this one for chiseling and this one for removing oxides. Always place the tools over the work before you look through the microscope. If you don't, you could cut your hands or cause further damage to the work. A safe place for the scalpel when not in use is in a holder. There it will stay sharp and be safely out of the way. Now we design our excavation. Take the double end explorer and begin to describe the area of the boundary to be removed. The boundary should be large enough to allow us to do the work easily, but not so large that it expands the work area to a point where it increases the complexity of the repair. You should note that we'll need to increase the magnification for milling. So we put on the accessory lens to take us from 10 power to 20 power magnification. The tool we will begin with is a tiny ball mill, chucked and turning precisely in a micro-sheen unit. It removes the substrate very rapidly, so take care it doesn't nick or cut the conductors just below the surface. Sweep back and forth with the ball mill. We know there's a conductor in our way on the second layer, so we'll start directly over it, going down as close as possible to determine its exact depth. Now, very carefully here, down a little bit, then out a ways, then down a little more. We don't want to risk nicking or gouging the conductor. We can tell how close we are by flushing the area with solvent to make it transparent. We switch now to a lap flow tool. Set the temperature of the tip so it is just hot enough to overcure the substrate, but not so hot as to burn it. Here you can see the substrate coming up, but there's no smoke and no burning. See how easily it removes the epoxy? And here, the conductor is actually being touched without damaging it. We now want to square up the sides. For this, we use a chisel. We want to leave the corners slightly rounded for ease of epoxy replacement. Carefully chisel straight edges and a smooth base. This is critical for rebuilding the substrate to its original dimension. This excavator is used to remove copper oxide from the surface of the conductor. We remove it now because it's non-solderable. We gently move the tool back and forth across the conductor. We want to completely expose the virgin copper surface. Here, we've removed all the oxide. Now we are ready to make the cuts and remove the conductor. We'll make the first cut, right here, a bevel cut. 
and on this side we will angle the blade to give us an overcut, rocking the blade back and forth until we're through. On this side, we'll angle the blade the same way to give us an undercut that makes replacement easier. We'll get to all that later. To loosen the bond between the conductor and the laminate, we'll carefully apply a little heat from our lap flow tool. There. With the lap flow tool and the side of the scalpel, we'll pry it up gently and lift it free. Now we will remove the conductor with a pair of tweezers and put it on a piece of static free tape to use later. Next, we'll make sure that all the copper oxide has been removed from the surface of the conductor. This is another excavator we can use, shaped like a teardrop. To protect the cut ends of the conductor, we'll pre-tin them with a generous drop of solder. That way, there's less risk of damaging them with further excavation. Now let's step down to the next level and the broken track. Here, the boundary for the next excavation is already scribed. Remember to start over the top of the conductor and work outward, only a little bit down. And then a little working out, then down a little further. When we get nearly down to the conductor, we'll switch to the lap flow tool and remove the last bit very slowly and carefully. The finished excavation should have a miniature staircase with cleanly squared off sides, which key us visually to each level, so we can rebuild the layers exactly one on top of the other. Now that we've completed the excavation, we're ready for the next step, how to repair an internal conductor. You'll find a full presentation of what we've covered so far in your handbook. So we'll stop now. Your instructor can now review the material on excavation before going on to the next lesson. This lesson will teach you how to repair an internal conductor. Using the training board with the excavated area we left off with in part one, we will scratch it up to mark it. An instructor will explain how we'll cut that part out and then put in a piece of replacement foil using butt joints with straight or bevel cuts. We're down on the third level. Here's the length of the run and we'll mark the damage right here. We're going to cut out this section, then take another piece, cut it exactly the same length, and solder it in. Now, we could just stack the new piece on top and use a couple of lap joints to hold it. But there's a problem on the next level up. Well, there may be a run going right over the top. And by stacking it, well, we've changed the dielectric distance between the layers and added excess metal on the ends. This could mess up the circuit impedance. So, we need to make an exact fit, and we can do it with straight cut butt joints like this, or better still, with bevel cuts. The problem with the straight cuts is that when you solder it in place, everything's fine when you do the first end, but then you come over to the other one, put your iron down here, it sends heat back to this joint, melts it, and it pops up on you. Also, the bevel cut gives you greater solder joint surface area. The trick is to use these bevel cuts, angle the blade so when you cut out the damaged piece, you leave an undercut on this conductor end and an overcut on this one. Then you take your replacement piece and bevel cut its ends so they lock in with the overcut on this end and the undercut here. Now, when we put them together and go to solder this end, this is locked under there and can't spring up. Using a number 11 scalpel blade, we'll make our bevel cuts. Take your time here and don't rush it. You're only going to have one chance to do it right. You have to be very careful here. 
The object is to cut just through the copper, not into the substrate underneath. It's very easy to go on through, and if you do, then you've got yourself a lot more work to do. Now we apply heat with a lap flow tool to weaken the epoxy bond. At the same time, we use the side of the scalpel to pry the conductor loose. Use the tweezers to pick up the free conductor. The conductor must be replaced with one of equal thickness and width, which can be found in this frame of commercially available conductor replacements. In many cases, we can match the internal conductors with these. One of these conductor replacements will do. It's a little wide, but we can trim it up later. On this end, we'll use a bevel cut. For this other end, it doesn't matter. We'll purposely cut it too long because we have to fit it exactly. Place it overcut to undercut in the excavated area to measure for correct length. It's just a little bit too long, so we'll trim it right here. Be sure and take it off the board to do it, though. This end will get an undercut, since it has to match with the overcut on the conductor end. Now we'll add flux and pre-tin the conductor ends on the board, making sure solder covers both beveled edges. A little cleaning and all will be ready. Since we'll be reflow soldering, we'll need to wet the surface of the work with a very thin layer of flux. The reason we need it is because we won't be getting it from any additional solder. Using a toothpick to hold the replacement piece down, we'll use a very light touch when soldering. Pressure with the iron could drive the run straight down to the next level. Now we'll clean off the flux residue. Always inspect the bevel joints to be sure you've got a good solder connection. Here we have a little too much solder, so we must remove the excess with a chisel. We don't want to decrease the thickness between laminates when we rebuild the board. Now for the width. We have to trim off the excess from right here. Time to mix the epoxy. Mix the resin and hardener according to the recommended ratios. Ground up circuit board material will add strength to the mixture. Mix the epoxy slowly. Air bubbles are the big problem with epoxy. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you get. Before applying the epoxy, burnish the repaired conductor. Here a bit of exposed copper is showing. In this case, it's all right. We're going to be encapsulating it anyhow. Now, smoosh the epoxy into the rounded corners a bit. Use the double end explorer to eliminate the air bubbles. The way to do this is to move them right over to the edge. If we don't get them all out, they may outgas in space after the epoxy cures, and that can ruin our job. Then cure it in an oven and chisel it smooth on top so it's right at the level of the circuitry on the next layer up. Then repeat the process on the next layer, 
putting in a new conductor and rebuilding that layer. Another way to do this is to use conductive epoxy instead of copper foil. It may be loaded with silver, which is shown here, copper or gold, and you can make your own conductor with it. Here we have excavated down and removed a small piece of damaged copper conductor and prepared some conductive epoxy. Put it across the gap between the conductor ends just like it was a piece of foil. Cure it in an oven and then trim it and shape it with a chisel. We remove the excess cured epoxy until it's level with the top of this layer. This is what it should look like after it's shaped. Burnish it a little more to polish it up. To finish, you plate it with copper. To do this, set the DC voltage for 3 volts. Then put the solution right into the excavated area with the positive probe in the pool and the negative one in the epoxy. The copper plates out over the conductive epoxy. Plating time is about 3 minutes. Then you flush it with water to remove every trace of the chemicals. Conductive epoxy is not as strong as foil, but it's a whole lot easier, and you don't have to apply any heated tools to the board. Next, you'll learn how to repair lifted lands and plated through holes. You'll find a full presentation of what we've covered so far in your handbook, so we'll stop now. Your instructor can now review the material on repairing an internal conductor before going on to the next lesson. In this lesson, first, we'll learn how to repair a lifted land. Using the chisel and soldering iron, we will lift the land. These illustrations show all the steps to take. The land is lifted, but still intact. So we'll peel it back out of the way and reuse it later, as shown here. We mill out the area around the exposed barrel of the plated through hole to create a land area. Changing to a lap flow tool, we can remove the rest of the laminate to the subsurface land of the inner layer. With the chisel, we remove the oxide from the surface of the land, exposing the bare copper. After this, we pre-tin the exposed land with solder and clean it. Next, we pre-flux the area, take a flat flanged eyelet, turn it upside down, position it, and reflow solder it in place. The excavated area can be filled in with epoxy, and the original land swaged in place and soldered. Now then, let's learn by doing. We'll start by milling the area completely around the plated through hole. Take it as close as you dare, but don't nick the conductor. Then use the lap flow tool to remove the rest of the laminate. To remove the oxide, you can use one of two excavators, the teardrop or double end explorer. After we've removed the oxide, we'll clean using solvent, then pre-tin, and clean again. Before pre-tinning, we first apply a small amount of flux to the surface. Now we're ready for the pre-tinning. Try to keep the solder from flowing into the plated through hole. Using solvent, clean away the flux and the flux residue. The eyelet we want needs to have the same internal diameter as the hole and be long enough to extend 1 32nd of an inch above the board. This is an acceptable fit. Now we flux the land then place the eyelet upside down and on the land and reflow solder the flange. Place the eyelet with care and hold it in position with the explorer so it won't move while soldering. Now we have an eyelet extending above the surface and the next step is to fill in the hole with epoxy. As shown before, we put some ground up circuit board in the mix to make it stronger. Then mix it slowly to keep from putting in a lot of air bubbles. 
Then we take our board and fill the hole very carefully so we don't get any of the epoxy inside the barrel. Then we take out the air bubbles and let it cure as required for the epoxy being used. Now we level off the top so it's flush with the board surface. We'll take off the high spots with a ball mill. For the final leveling, down to the surface of the board, we'll use the teardrop excavator. Then we solvent clean again and put the land back on. The repaired area is positioned on the support base. We'll use the cone shaped tip of the eyelet setting tool to swage it down good and tight. The eyelet is funnel set so that we'll get a reliable fillet between the land and the body of the eyelet. Now we will hand solder the eyelet. This gives us an acceptable fillet under the funnel set. Clean it up and we're as good as new. Now let's look at plated through hole repair. Here we have a cross-sectional view of plated through holes in a four-layer board. You'll notice conductors running to the lands on both sides of the board. Other conductors terminate at lands on the second layer. In this view, there are none running to the lands at the third layer. This illustration shows a fracture on the second layer of the plated through hole. This view shows the area we'll be excavating. First, we need to take a drill bit and only drill out the area to be excavated. You want the size of the bit to be just a little larger than the barrel of the hole, like this. Now we change the drill bit for a ball mill and start the excavation. Then the replacement conductor is formed into an L, positioned and reflow soldered into place. A new eyelet is positioned through the board from the opposite side and soldered. The excavated area is rebuilt with epoxy. A new land and conductor is placed over the eyelet. And the eyelet is swaged and soldered into place. Now let's do it. We begin by excavating. After drilling out the plated through hole, we use the ball mill to remove the bulk of the material. Then, after cleaning, we'll switch to the lap flow tool to go a little bit deeper. For the final excavation, we'll use the chisel. We don't need to excavate all around the land on this one, just over the conductor from here to here. The width is only a bit wider than the conductor, and at this point, We'll lap flow solder our new piece of conductor and take it down through the hole. We'll select the replacement piece from this frame of conductors. We'll need to cut the conductor long enough to go through the hole. So we'll bend it about here. Now it's bent into an L shape. The short end is the one we're going to solder to the conductor, and we'll do it with a lap joint. Now we clean, flux, pre-tin, then clean again. Before positioning the replacement conductor, it should be cleaned with solvent. Then take the tweezers and place the L in position. Use a toothpick to hold it while you solder. Use a small soldering iron tip to reflow the solder and complete the lap joint. This way you can see that the repair is good every step of the way.
a land can be cut from this pre-tin frame of lands and conductors. Then choose an eyelet of the right size to complete the repair. First, place the eyelet in the hole. See how our new conductor gets sandwiched between the land and the flange of the eyelet? This is a good mechanical connection. A little trimming of the new conductor is done very carefully so you don't go through and cut the land underneath. Then we solder it into place. Now we solve and clean it. After turning the board over, we inspect it. It's that lap joint inside the board we need to see, making sure it didn't reflow and lift when we heated the joint on the bottom. Looks to be just as good as it was. And here's our barrel, extending slightly above the top of the board, just the right height. We're ready to epoxy it. The procedure for epoxying here is the same as it was for the lifted land. We take our board and fill the hole very carefully so we don't get any of the epoxy inside the barrel. Then we take out the air bubbles and let it cure for as long as we should. We'll take off the high spots with the ball mill. For the final leveling, down to the surface of the board, we'll use the teardrop excavator. Then we solvent clean again, put the land back on, and swage the eyelet. The eyelet is funnel set, so that we'll get a reliable fillet between the land and the body of the eyelet. Now we'll hand solder the eyelet, clean it up, and we're as good as new. This completes the lessons concerning lifted land and plated through hole repair. You'll find a full presentation of what we've covered in your handbook. Your instructor can now review the material.